Great. Sorry, I'm just shuffling the furniture here slowly. <laughs> Get a bit closer. Hi, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us for this panel on a very important topic, a topic I can discuss all day. Uh, firstly, to introduce myself, I'm Charlotte G. I write the download, the only newsletter you need to read in text, so subscribe to it. Sorry, I have to get the plug in. Of course. You know. <laughs> um, so yeah, this topic, I just wanted to set a little bit of context. Um, sexism has existed, you know, since societies have existed, and it's existed at the beginning of the internet. But the problem is potentially getting worse. Um, there's a lot of research which shows, you know, half of women experience online abuse. Um, and that's, that's just studying in the last year, lots of it on Twitter. So what I want us to talk about is where we go from here. That's just to set a bit of context. And now let's get on to the main questions. <laughs> um, what problems do women face online? Katerina, do you, do you want to kick us off? Set, set, set the scene. First of all, I want to say that it's incredible to be in front of this audience. Thank you. <laughs> it's incredible. Look at this energy. Thank you all. Uh, and then it's, it's an honor to be interviewed by you, Charlotte. Charlotte does an amazing job as a journalist. Thank you once again. And then I have to tell, first of all, that I'm here, not for myself, honestly. Honestly, I'm here for the millions of girls and women around the world that have voice, but whose voices cannot be heard because they don't have the opportunity to, to be on the stage like this and to speak for an audience like this. So, and because I really think that technology can help them fulfill their potential, that's why I'm here. Speak for them at the Web Summit. Thank you. <laughs> so, answer. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, answering your question, Charlotte, uh, I think discrimination and different forms of violence women face online and offline are similar. Mm -hmm. We're talking about um, sexual harassment, uh, potential rape, online uh, sexism, gender-based violence and bullying, but widespread and with an impact that we still have to evaluate and to study. Women from all ages are attacked in front of a, of a global audience and they leave that drama completely alone, behind the screen, with also an impact on their mental health. So, uh, but in this web summit, I, I must uh, remind you all that uh, digital access is essential uh, for women and girls to guarantee their rights and their potential. And digital access really impacts them uh, to find the ability to find information, for example, about their menstruation, which is still a taboo, menstruation. There's millions of girls around the world out of school forever because of their menstruation. So it also connects with peers, uh, builds social movements, um, also uh, um, explore their identities and ask help for harassment or violence. Another thing that is important to say is uh, girls are less, much less than boys to, to internet, mm -hmm. to access mm -hmm. to internet. Four times less than boys in some countries. And they are also less likely to have their own iPads, mobile phones, or computers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Sophia, for you, what, what are the problems that, that you see facing women online in, in 2021? I think I want to reflect what Katarina was saying. Of course, these are all very well-known problems, and they become exacerbated when you put an in intersectionality into it, right? Mm -hmm. So when you talk about women of color, we, women who are part of the LGBTQ community mm -hmm. or have a disability, that just exacerbates these problems and becomes even worse. So uh, that's, that's a big point also to mention, yes. Yeah, it's very, that's an extremely important point. Um, the only feminism I'm interested in is intersectional feminism, definitely. 
And um, what is technology doing for women that is positive, in your opinion, Katerina? Because I didn't want to give the impression that we are anti-technology on this panel. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Look, you're the one who have papers. I know. I know. Technology journalists have... holding paper. I did. The oldest technology. <laughs> it's, sometimes it's the best. <laughs> no, I think a lot is being done, actually, Charlotte. Um, internet and social networks are excellent communication tools, of course. They, they increase women's visibility in public spaces. At the same time, they draw attention to all kinds of violence, sexual violence, domestic violence, child marriages as well, um, and also make it possible for women to express their solidarity with other women. And we have um, the, the black protest campaign as an example, and also make possible for us to express our solidarity, for example, with the Polish women that recently saw their uh, sexual and reproductive rights denied. So I, I, I think, I don't know if you agree with me, but I think there's a new generation of feminists, not only young women, but also older women with the digital skills. And they use it as a megaphone. In a way, they, they jump, they move from the streets to the web uh, to, to speak out. And this is really powerful, I think. Uh, as UNFPA Goodwill Ambassador, so United Nations Population um, Fund, which is a volunteer mission, I'm a volunteer, for 21 years already, uh, I've been to field visits to Mozambique, Cape Verde, Guinea-Bissau, Saint Tomé Príncipe, Haiti, India, South Sudan, Uganda, Ghana, uh, Bangladesh, Colombia, Lebanon, Egypt. And what I can tell now, it's uh, based on real stories with real people. My advocacy now is stronger. And that's it because of the internet, mm -hmm. social media. So if I share, for example, a story of a refugee person in a refugee camp, that message reaches immediately the heart, the soul, the mind of thousands of people, encouraging them, inviting them to transformative action. And I was in Cox Bazar refugee camp in Bangladesh, and it was really clear for me. It was obvious because I received thousands of uh, messages from people trying to help and asking about the Rohingya community and how women still have babies delivery in such a humanitarian crisis conditions, which is really uh, horrible. So um, I think internet is much more than social network or social uh, media. For many girls and women, it's really a way, an opportunity to learn, to write, to read, uh, and it gives them access to a huge library of knowledge and freedom as well. Online learning, for example, um, it's really important for them to have an opportunity to, to take or to do a master's or degree. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, uh, it's very, very important. So technologies are crucial to guarantee human rights and also education. Yeah. Uh, and UNFPA, sorry, I will just <laughs> add this, because UNFPA, United Nations Population Fund, does, does it, uses it. Um, for example, in sexual and reproductive uh, health, uh, online training of young girls and women, and also professionals, it's a way of de trying to decrease the number of deaths from pregnancy and child marriage uh, related causes and also to increase counseling. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, if you know that every minute, 830 women die from pregnancy and childbirth. It's awful, it's insane. Uh, I've been there with many of them, hand by hand, say, saying goodbye to them. And I will never, never in my life, I will never forget their faces. Why? Because they were completely healthy women with no problem. Uh, it was preventable death. So I think we cannot cope with that. Mm -hmm. We cannot accept that. So as we sit here, Charlotte, 
23 minutes <laughs> of conversation, 20,750 women are going to die from pregnancy and childbirth. It's awful. So I, I really believe that technology, internet, uh, digital tools, if used with intelligence, they can reduce this number. Mm -hmm. So this is something that uh, um, I think it's possible. So it's possible. We just need the will, the commitment, and the belief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Katrina. That's um, very moving <laughs> for you to say this. Um, I wonder, Sophia, if you could talk a little bit. We're here at Web Summit, and uh, a lot of us are looking at light at the end of the tunnel of this pandemic, we hope. We've said this before, but fingers crossed it's true now. What has the pandemic done for <laughs> women's progress online for, for you, Sophia? What, where do you think we're doing well, not so well? I don't think we're doing so well, and I don't think the pandemic has really helped. The women's participation in the workforce has dropped dramatically, significantly over the pandemic. So that's certainly something that we shouldn't be proud of. Uh, with that in mind, we have also opened up an opportunity for women and other groups to work from home. So there's more and more companies now looking at the opening up to that possibility, to the hybrid work, to remote work, and that has been opening uh, opportunities for women, especially those who are caregivers, both of child, uh, children and uh, adults, uh, but also even introverts and other groups that would prefer to work from home. So I think there's a big opportunity um, to be a little bit more fair and to be more equitable in that sense. Having said that, it's also an additional challenge now that we also need to think of how to create these equitable workplaces when we know that the groups who will choose to stay home and want to stay home are majority um, women, women and caregivers. And how do we make sure that they are equally visible to managers and team leads who are in the office with other workers in the office? So that's an additional challenge that we now are trying to figure out, we collectively. And I think we all have a role to play here in sharing best practices. And by we, I mean companies, in sharing best practices on how to do this and how to be fair and just for, for these groups. Mm, that's a great point. We don't want to have a kind of two-tier system, definitely. Katerina, for you, I'm, I'm going to move on to my next question, which was around how we create a more inclusive and safer and more feminist but internet. But you, I, I just want to say that the major failing, mm. I think, yeah. it's... Uh, it's in education because if a girl, for example, or a woman cannot read or write, she, internet is just a word with no meaning and no benefits. And it happens a lot. For example, about um, uh, domestic violence, uh, one in three women in the world becomes a victim of domestic violence uh, in their lifetime. It's horrible as well. So UNFPA in Guinea-Bissau, and I was there, um, has implemented a project uh, to prevent domestic violence. They gave phones to women uh, for their safety, of course, and for, um, to help neighbors. And it worked very well. But before, you know what they have to do. Before they had to teach women to recognize the numbers so they should have you know, the knowledge to, to call yeah. in an emergency. Mm -hmm. So I think education is the key. Um, and then you just asked me, yeah, mm -hmm. the pandemic, is it? What? Yeah, well, I was, no, I was actually asking about um, what we do to create a more safe feminist internet. What, what are the steps that you, you would like to see? Uh, I, I think internet can be very close friends, of course, but it, we, we have to know how to use it. We cannot be slaves of, uh, to the short sentences. We cannot be slaves to the number of characters, uh, algorithms, shares, likes. We cannot be slaves to the sexy slogans that um, lead to misunderstandings and end up uh, reinforcing populism. Mm -hmm. I think this is very important because I think the Internet uh, must invest in, in women and, and girls uh, based on their own needs instead of uh, promoting mm -hmm. stereotypes. Um, to me, 
to be a feminist is to, is to be informed, it's to be supportive, to support women, men and women support women. Um, yeah, men and women and all human beings support women. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> it was forced, but okay. <laughs> I wonder, uh, actually, if I can direct a question at you, Sophia, which is um, around, you. <laughs> around, around the role of uh, companies. Of course, you know, you, you are a, a business leader. Can companies really be allies in this effort, or will they always be on the sidelines trying to catch up? I think they can and they absolutely should um, <laughs> be allies in this, uh, in this challenge. I, I think my dream is to that all companies one day will realize that their power for change in the world goes way beyond the bottom line. And the experience that they provide to their employees has actually a ripple effect that will impact communities, families, because each of these employees is a parent, a sister, a brother, a um, friend. And whatever experience they have at the workplace, which is where we spend most of our lives, mm -hmm. will have a ripple effect. So if we create experiences that are diverse, inclusive, that respect these challenges that we are facing in society, and actually teach people and actually allow them to grow as professionals and as human beings, we are, we as companies are having a bigger impact in the world, way beyond, again, whatever system, whatever product, whatever service you, are, you have in your company. Mm -hmm. and, and for you, Katerina, how, how do you feel about this? From, from the perspective you come from, what is the role that, that companies can, can play? I think women still have a, a lot of difficulties uh, in um, balancing personal, family and work life. Um, and, and I really do think that companies can, can do much more about it. Women access to top job, we all know, uh, remains limited. And we all know also that women are few on the board of of the companies, mm. as well as governments and parliaments. So globally, uh, I have to say that, that uh, globally men, on average, uh, earns 20% more than women. And in Portugal, for example, the difference is 14. In, it will take 257 years before women get equal pay for the same jobs according to the World Foreign Economic Forum. So I, I think states, government, uh, civil society, companies must collaborate more in order that to, to find a, a, a safer and, and fair world as well. Um, it's our collective responsibility to create uh, safer places in the digital world as we do with our villages, with our cities, and for that, I think we need your support to achieve gender equality. Because for my experience, uh, and I saw a lot of uh, projects where investment was in gender equality, uh, gender equality is the key to control poverty. Mm. And, and that's why, to finish, I have to, to remind you all the three zeros that uh, UNFPA wants to achieve by 2030. Zero and met need for family planning. Zero preventable maternal death. Zero violence and harmful practice against women and girls like, namely, um, female genital mutilation and also early and forced marriages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a fantastic uh, aspiration to, to be working towards. Sophia, I wonder, I'm, I'm looking at the role of, of big tech here. What changes would you like to see to facilitate a better experience online for women? I think we need to see more diversity <laughs> to first to, to in these companies and um, their contribution of these diverse teams in their products and creating products and creating 
features, whatever it is in this, these platforms, products, and services that actually reflect the user. And it's not just a white male. That as a user, we have a, a whole population to reflect. So more diverse teams, I think that's really important. And at all levels of the company, right? So from, we're talking leadership, yes, uh, we need more support at that level. But we also need diversity at all the levels. We need diversity in the teams that are actually developing these features, that are actually having discussions about what is the actual uh, benefit for the user and what can, be, can it be used against or for. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that would be a big step ahead. So just more awareness that the diversity of these teams in the companies could it's be a big step forward. It's important. And I know I'm moderator, but I would add also money. Women only get 3% of venture capital funding. Yes. Women give yes. women yes. more money. <laughs> um, Katerina, for you, what are the changes you would like I just, to see? I, well? I will just ask Big Tech to do is to comply on the internet with the fundamental ethics um, of the universal principles of human rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's extremely important. <laughs> And I wonder, I've looked at this from the perspective of society, big technology, companies. Um, much as this is not an individual problem, I wonder if either, both of you have advice for women and girls as they embark on their lives online. Of course, for a woman who is born today, her whole life is going to be online. What, do you have advice for that, Sophia? Do you, do you have any tips? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we were just talking in backstage. Uh, support each other. I think it's really important and fundamental that we women stay together uh, and be allies for each other. We also mentioned the intersectionality, right? The fact that we're the three of us are here with a microphone talking to a lot of people in front of us is a privilege, and we should use this wisely and be able to make the change that the world needs. But I would also leave a word, not just for women and girls, but for men, mm -hmm. because we need men also, and we meet. And we like them. <laughs> and we like them, <laughs> and we need them on our side. And of we course. need them to be aware um, of these challenges and to be supportive. And the next time they're in a meeting and there's a woman being interrupted constantly <laughs> or not being able to speak because she's remote, <laughs> working it from home, just stand up for them, uh -huh. speak up, even if they're not there, and especially if they're not there in some other situation just speak up and be there for them. I think that's fundamental. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's extremely important. We need, we need men, we need good allies on our side. Katerina, uh, what about uh, you? I don't like to say advices, but I mean, for my, the way I, I do in my life, or I deal with my life, I, I, I think it's really important to remember the power that we have, that girls have, in the offline. So the power... Uh, never allow, um, never allow online bullying to take that individual power from you. Mm -hmm. And um, remember the power of looking someone in their eyes in the offline. It, I think it gives us uh, the strength to face any negative uh, environment um, with the right tools and support, as you said, Sophia. I think we all, I mean, girls, women. Um, have the power to change the world. And we have examples of that everywhere, you know, from uh, climate justice to universal education. The transformative legacy that incredible, incredible women uh, give us, the ones who fulfill their potential, is everywhere as well, from new laws to life-saving uh, vaccines to the frontiers of technology. So uh, what I think is, and that's why I believe, I believe the power of support each other. And that's why I founded it in 2012, my non-profit organization, NGO, called Hearts with a Crown. And one of our first projects was um, provide scholarships uh, with psychosocial support for women, girls, in vulnerable situations to go on with their studies, with their, uh, with their dreams, to be whatever they want to be. And we have like 34 women already from football players, <laughs> lawyer, lawyers, uh, medics, nurses, doctors. It's, it's incre incredible the power of, of changed lives. Changing lives is the more, po more powerful thing that we, we can have it. That's 
Fantastic. I was looking through the <laughs> line and I was like, oh, Charlotte. <laughs> She's looking behind the curtain. Thank you both of you so much. And thank you to everyone in the audience for coming. This has been such a well-attended talk and it really gives me hope. For thank the you for your energy. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>